So all of that, that work was based on MLST or an extended MLST uh, sampling uh, strategy and we're now using, routinely using whole genome sequencing which allows us to get at various aspects of uh, the epidemiology of infectious disease. We can readily now extract um, genomic DNA, sequence it and use it for whole genome sequencing to look at within host diversification, uh, transmission, evolution of, of pathogenic uh, clones and, and the dynamics of these host jump uh, events. We can also use these new sequencing technologies to look at the transcriptome, so we can look at gene expression analysis, and we can also apply it uh, to a number of other procedures, particularly uh, powerful procedures such as transposon sequencing, which allows us to identify genes which are important for survival of bacteria in a particular uh, environment or, or host. But obviously we're focusing here on the whole genome uh, sequencing for understanding epidemiology and evolution. I wanted to talk about one particular clone, CC97, which is probably the, the major clone of Staph aureus associated with causing bovine mastitis on a global scale. And uh, this map shows the association or, or shows the various locations where CC97 has been reported to cause bovine mastitis. And uh, pretty much everywhere you look, it's been found. So that obviously there's lots of uh, unreported areas. This is because there hasn't been very good sampling of strains within those, those regions. So dominant as a uh, cause of bovine mastitis can also cause uh, ruminant uh, small ruminant mastitis and uh, can occasionally cause pig uh, infections as well. Okay, so those are the ones which are indicated in, uh, in green. What we noticed a few years ago that there seemed to be increased reports of human infections caused by CC97. Uh, so over a number of years we saw increased numbers of human CC97s and actually when we asked our colleagues in, in Denmark who have a very good surveillance system whereby there's mandatory uh, reporting of all uh, Staph aureus isolates associated with uh, bacteremia in, uh, in Denmark and they then do some basic bacterial typing uh, in order to identify what genotypes of Staph aureus uh, there are. They could show that actually over a, a five-year period, a four-year period between 2007 and 2011, there was a, a five-fold increase in the number of human bacteremia infections which were caused by uh, CC97. So it seems to be on the increase, at least in Denmark and possibly uh, elsewhere. So we we're interested in understanding, going back to the potential basis for the multi-host tropisms of Staph aureus clones, uh, we were interested in understanding the evolutionary history of the CC97 clo claim, uh, clone to see how it had uh, evolved. So I in my group, Laura, who was a PhD student, uh, worked at the whole genome sequence for a bunch of CC97 strains from different hosts and she drew, reconstructed the phylogeny using the program BEAST, which you're going to hear a lot uh, more about later on. This is the tree, and um, what you can see labelled here are in blue are the uh, human-associated strains, uh, sorry, or the uh, bovine-associated strains, in red are the human-associated uh, strains, and in green we just had two uh, pig strains which are included in the analysis as well. And actually this yellow one here is a goat isolate. So straight off you can see there's a large um, diversity of human uh, strains. So there's much greater, uh, of livestock strains, much greater diversity of uh, bovine strains than there is of, of human strains. And in fact all of the human strains uh, cluster together into two separate subclades within uh, the phylogenetic tree. Um, and the ancestral state for the CC97 clode looks like it's of, uh, of bovine origin here, as you can see by the blue uh, labelling. Uh, so this suggests that there's been two, at least two independent host jumps 
from cows, most likely, into humans. Okay, so one occurring somewhere along this branch and one occurring somewhere along uh, this branch. So this was a, a successful host switching event, not just a single episode of infection, because you can see then that it's adapted and transmitted onward to other uh, humans causing infections. And in actual fact, we had a fairly limited number of isolates, but these are from four different continents globally. So it's really spread, um, spread around the world. This clade B here, representing the, the second human clade, is uh, much, much more geographically restri restricted, but has also been found in multiple countries. Yes? How do you know it's bovine to human and not the other one? Well, it's a, it's a very good question, and sometimes it's not clear from, from the tree which direction it should be. And the reason we infer this is because there's, uh, the ancestral state based on this tree is predicted uh, to be bovine, okay? So all of the diversity that we see amongst the bovine strains is, is contributing to this. So if you could essentially go back in time, predicted time through the tree, what we predict is that this posi position here on the tree was bovine. This was also predicted to be bovine here. So therefore that would infer that the direction is going to be from uh, bovine into human, okay? Well, we can only do that because we have a root on the tree, so we can infer what the ancestor of all of the strains in, in the tree is. Okay. So, so that's that. So this um, indicated to us for the first time that cows can be a reservoir for new strains of, of Staph aureus, which uh, can colonise and spread in in human populations. So that's probably something we need to be aware of, and to have some kind of effective surveillance to try and spot these events when they happen. The other interesting thing, I think, that we found from this analysis, this is just this is another form of, of the same tree. And what we wanted to do is actually to look at the levels of antibiotic sensitivity across uh, all, these, all these strains. Because we wanted to know if the MRSA strains that we found in, um, uh, among the CC97 isolates wanted to see if they were likely to have emerged in, in livestock or whether they actu actually emerged in, in human populations. So we can see that a lot of the, you don't need to see the detail on this, but I can take it from me, that there's quite a lot of anti uh, antibiotic resistance represented among the human isolates. Uh, so you can see here penicillin uh, resistance, also oxacillin, which is the marker for methicillin uh, resistance. Okay, so quite a lot of these are MRSA. None of the bovine strains were MRSA. Okay, so it looks like the MRSA strains did not evolve in, uh, in ruminant hosts, in the bovine hosts, but they evolved after the host jump into humans. So presumably by uh, prescription of antibiotics for treating human, human in infections. That's how, that was a selective pressure which led to those. So that's good because it means that it's not at least dairy uh, agriculture practices which is contributing to the emergence of, of MRSA, which as you may be aware is a major uh, concern at the moment that we're seeing practices of antibiotic use in agriculture, which might be promoting the emergence of, of antibiotic resistance, which could then be a threat to public health. However, the same could not be said for the pig strains. So the pig strains were also resistant to uh, methicillin and several other classes of an antibiotic uh, as well. So it looks like, uh, and these are slightly different types of genetic elements which are encoding for the methicillin resistance in the pigs versus the humans. So it looks like this is independent evolution of MRSA in, in pig strains rather than in the human strains. And so what we think is that is the use of antibiotics, probably not for growth promotion because that's been uh, banned in Europe for quite a number of years now. But there's been probably an escalation in the volumes of antibiotics that have been used for prophylactic 
uh, treatment of, of infections within that industry. And this has seen the emergence of MRSA. In some cases, then, these pig strains are then causing zoonotic infections of, of humans uh, and then causing problems in, in the treatment of those uh, infections in, in humans. 